You're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. Now, this is a American history podcast, and each week, I, flamethrower eater, what? Flame lover th- of dogs, oh my God. man who eats sandwiches, Dave Anthony, wow. reads a story. Fire and sandwiches, boy to mister. His friend, Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. That was good. I thought you were good. I was great on that somewhat. one. You, somewhat. I, d- I will say, your th- list of three there, if we could keep them to that caliber, I'm back in on the bit. You know, those are solid. It's just when we're talking about, like, guy who performs dish soaping. Oh, I... Nap uh, taker. Guy who pours dish soap into the, the special uh, fancy dish soap holder. And called it, quote, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy! Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like anarchy! On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> My room's blank! Now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo! No sleep tell hippo! Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. I sleep done, my friend. No. <laughs> no. Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Yum. Ladies and other people, uh, okay. we are brought to you by Stamps.com. Uh, you know, these days you can get pretty much anything on demand, Gareth. Sure. Um, Movies, uh, foods, sandwiches. films. Um, like our podcast, for instance. Is That's that right? That's an example of something you can get on demand. Oh, I have been ordering it. Well, what if you could get postage on demand? Yeah, I'm talking about stamps.com. You POD? Sweet. Yep. Uh, with stamps.com, you can access all the services you can at the post office, right from your own house. Sure. Sitting at your desk in front of your computer. You buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package using your own computer and printer. Uh, mail carrier comes and picks it up. Dude, what's your mail carrier's name? Uh, mine's Garcon. Garcon comes and uh, he's he- French. He's a, uh, well, I mean, if, to tell you his story would be lengthy. Uh, but let's just say his change from the countryside. Has not been easy upon him. We, oui. so Garcon uh, comes and just picks up your stuff, and that's it. Uh, you click, click, you print, you mail. Boom, you're done. I use it uh, for all the dollop stuff we mail out. And now, now we have an assistant. I don't know if I told you that. Uh, we Can't hired, wait to uh, meet this person. Uh, his name's Garcon. What? Um, that bastard. He's having a hard time with the transition. He hasn't been telling me everything during our port breaks. So, uh, so yeah, it's super easy. You can get a scale. You know, they send you all this stuff. It's perfect. Uh, you I can get scale, the labels though. from them. You can get the stamps. It's all good. Uh, so right now, use Dollop for the special offer. Includes up to $55 free postage, a digital scale, and a four-week trial. Nice. Now, don't wait. That's longer than OJ's. Go to stamps.com. And before you do anything else, click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Dollop. That's stamps.com. Enter dollop boom okay um we're also uh sponsored by and members of the dollar shave club that's right we uh which you uh, need to jump on I'm you're ready. ready for i'm ready you I'm were just waiting. saying before the show you were gonna shave it so well, you, you but gotta then use... you told me about what it might look like in the heat of thailand <laughs> Uh, so dollar shave clubs ha- uh, has everything you need uh for shaving and and just to make yourself nice in the bathroom. Yeah, I've always wanted to make myself nice in the bathroom, you pervert. Um, <laughs> I use I use their razors. Uh, it's fantastic. Dave, like just because I like the weight of like just because nice I weight. have a beard doesn't mean I'm not using them. Hello, wink, wink. What? Wink, wink in the sink. Let's stop. Okay. Um, uh, it d- they deliver everything you need uh, to look, feel, and smell your best, which you know you could help Here with the go. smells. Here we go. Uh, you got shampoo, conditioner, body wash, body wash, body wash, uh, toothpaste, hair gel, and okay. even a wipe that'll leave your tush feeling nice and clean. All right. They got a bottom wipe. That's I, good for you. I'm ready to move on. I don't, I, I'm not a fan of that angle you're working, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they call you Dirty Bottom Gary. Dirty Gary. Uh, so, uh, here's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club's products. For just five bucks, you can get their Daily Essentials starter set. It comes with body cleanser, one wipe Charlie's. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Their uh, amazing butt wipes. I guess that's not what I'm talking about. 
What is happening? Uh, their world famous shave butter, which also you can put on your bottom. <laughs> And their best razor, the six blade executive, which, which is I'm what gonna, I use. Yeah, but I'm gonna have you use it on my bottom. Yeah, well, after I, I butter I, it I up. I shave your bottom more than once with hey. the six blade executive. Hey, keep the blades coming for a few more bucks a month, and add in shampoo, toothpaste, or anything else you need for the bathroom. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com/dollop. That's dollarshaveclub.com/dollop. Dollop. We are also sponsored by something you like to sleep on, my friend. Ah, uh, Casper corpses. mattresses. No, no. You don't do that anymore. Sorry. Casper. Uh, you uh, you enjoy your Casper. I'm an uh, owner of a Casper mattress. It's nice and to sink into that bad boy, I isn't it? I love it. At night, you get I, good sleep. You know, the truth is when I tell people how much time I spend in bed, <laughs> they look sad. <laughs> but they don't know that feeling of a Casper. <laughs> I like just opening up the box and watching it come out. And yeah, come I like locking the door to the bedroom mm -hmm. and just getting a bag of Fritos and just spending 36 hours in there without leaving. That's called depression. <laughs> uh, Casper, uh, I'm sorry, po our podcast listeners are invited to take advantage of Casper's competitive limited time Memorial Day sale offer. Casper is the place to shop for Memorial Day mattress savings this year. They sell directly to you, eliminating added costs and saving you money. You can be sure your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk fee, risk free, not fee. Sleep on a trial and returns are hassle free if you're not completely satisfied. And you're going to be, trust yeah. me. Casper has three mattress lines to choose from the original Casper, which is the one that has the ghost in it, the innovative wave, and <laughs> the streamlined essential. I mean, it'd be amazing if someone sold a haunted mattress. I mean, he's nice, but I don't <laughs> want him in my life. He keeps talking about things we have to do. Sir, they're called Casper mattresses. For I a understand reason. that, but I was very clear when I ordered it. I don't want the one with the ghost inside. You asked for the original. Ah, uh, you it's the language you had on the site, I guess. I don't know, but all right, well we gotta go find a friend of his, um, who I guess is seventy five now. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on. All right, thank you. Bed's comfy though. The breathable design of each mattress helps you sleep cool and regulate your body temperature throughout the night. Uh, for a limited time, visit Casper.com Savings and receive 10% off your order with any mattress purchase. This off special offer expires May 29th, 2018. Again, that's Casper.com slash savings for 10% off your order with any mattress purchase until May 29th, 2018. Terms and conditions apply. Boom. Okay. Go. Uh, well, I would uh, like to say that this podcast is also sponsored by Mitch Hurwitz, uh, who one time asked if he could just be announced as a sponsor, and I said, for sure. Um, <laughs> but that leads me to a great point, Dave, which is that the new season of Arrested Development uh, starts on Netflix May 29th worldwide, and uh, that is a show I worked uh, uh, quite some time on, and uh, people should check it out. Uh, I saw some the other night, and they're funny. Yeah, uh, and the cast is hilarious, and I would watch the show. Anyway, uh, enough about that. Um, also, on top of that, Arrested Development, May 29th. Uh, oh God! <laughs> I mean, that was really bad timing for you. <laughs> we've that. we've had a spill. Aaron, how do we handle it? We were trying. We were using. We were doing space I mean, work. You know, this is all. I'm sure a lot of horrible stuff has happened in this studio. So uh, a whole thing of tea is fine. It was nice iced tea, though. It was a good iced tea. We'll get you another one. Can we get him another one I at mean, some point? What are you gonna do? You know what? Some, some nobody else who does podcasts here is like a reasonable human being, so they can just sit in that. Look at Aaron. Aaron, I'm sorry. Does Bill Listen. Burr record here? Or does he record at his house? His house. So none of these these other people are all fucked. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, I'll be. Uh, hey, gang. It's Gareth again. Uh, I've got some dates coming up. You can go to GarethReynolds.com. Find out all those. I'll be at the uh, Tempe Improv uh, uh, the June 1st uh, with Dan Cummings. How dare you? Uh, opening for Dan Cummings. I will be there uh, May 31st through June 2nd. Then I'll be at the Stress Factory in New Jersey, uh, June 21st through the 23rd. Laps Comedy Club in Seattle, June 29th oh and the 30th. Nobody cares. And then we should also mention... Uh, okay, so you know, a lot of people are asking about uh, Kosamoy and what happened. Um, so basically... Uh, Gareth is working on a show right now, and then there's a possibility that he was going to get another job. And then at the same time, I got offered a job, but then that kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. So basically, it got into this point where we both kind of had to get a job offer at the same time. And if we didn't, it fucked us because it's hard to negotiate. I want time off. 
when you might not when one of you might not be going. So yeah. it made it super super complicated. Um, so I ended up getting the offer um, super last minute and no no ability to go to Thailand. They were like, "You're out." Yeah, um, I have to take the job because it's like a five month job and it's a really good job. Um, so that was basically what happened. Gareth then learned he can go to Thailand. So what we're going to do is I'm going to write up a dollop. Um, we're going to have one of the Australian yahoos read it to Gareth. And, and then it'll be like a, a, a Dave Anthony Dave less dollop. dollop, which a lot of people will be happy about. Well, we've already <laughs> had some of you on your own. So it's time to, I, I think it's great to bring a new possible people for me to work with on this podcast. And I like the idea that you, like you're saying, you might take a step back, you might just write them for people. Yeah. Uh, I think that's great. Um, but yeah, so I'll be in Thailand. I think I'm going to leave, I think I'll get there a day later than everything else starts, but uh, I'll be there and I'll be doing all, you know, all the podcasts and all that stuff. So yeah. So you'll have, ha you'll have it in, in the funny part. Sure. Right. Not the organized part. So there's a chance I won't get there because <laughs> I'll be traveling alone. Which has proven very difficult. <laughs> anyway, that's what happened. So I have a job, and it's complicating things. And hopefully, hopefully, and we, I don't. And Aaron's uh, cleaning tea up. Hopefully, we can all keep all our floor. our live dates also. Yeah. So um, we'll we'll keep you up to date on that. Yes. Uh, I think that's it. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, Aaron. Yeah, I'm sorry too, Aaron. Aaron's dropping ice because um, there was Aaron's a lot of ice happy. in there. Well, when Gareth slapped away my hand that wasn't actually going towards him, there's a lid for a reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know whose side you want to take, he, Aaron. But Aaron just shrugged. Yeah, Aaron's not happy. Aaron rolled his eyes and sighed over here like three or four times. 1873! Nice. The <laughs> Does anyone else smell tea? Yeah, it's very okay. tea-ish. It's very tea-ish in here. Uh, the town of Clifton was founded in eastern Arizona. Okay. As the miners, as miners sat along the banks of the uh, of a canyon stream near the San Francisco River and Chase Creek, so okay. it sounds nice, right? Yeah, I'm sold. What are we Airbnb in? Yep. Cliff surrounded Clifton. Uh, sure, the, makes sense. Uh, the rivers often often flooded, uh, which then just washed away all the houses and businesses. That's nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like God renovating the streets. But there's copper there, so they just kept rebuilding. Great. I mean, it's basically like if you look at a picture of it, you'd be like, "Why would you build a, why would you build a place there? Like oh. it's just surrounded by cliffs." That happens a flood in plain. Malibu now. Yeah. Okay, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> One thousand feet up uh, from Clifton was the town of Morency. Okay. Clifton, uh, sorry, copper was also discovered there in 1872, and mining started the next year. By 1904, Morency was a shoot 'em up Western hell town. And fought with Tombstone for the title of toughest town in Arizona. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh. Uh, I don't know what's going on now, but I don't like it when Aaron walks around. I think we spoke said, tea wow. on the camera. I also don't like it when he says, don't worry about it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Look the other way. He's already like, you already spilled tea, motherfucker. So yeah. Morency was more of a camp than a town, while Clifton had a bit of a business district sort of centralized situation okay saloons and brothels huge in both towns okay so that i was it's funny because i was like which one would have that yeah well out yeah. of the two yeah. is it a business or oh all of them all I'm, two. I'm imagining clifton has the the higher end brothels and sure and morency has the lower well morency is where it was itchies mama itchies itchies which is one of the best scratchies itchies and next yeah. door scratches also uh, next door is bugs yeah oh god <laughs> Hey, uh, guys, don't go to Bugs. They ain't lying. <laughs> Violence was common. A sure. squad of Arizona Rangers had to come in to settle a Mexican smelter strike in 1903. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Mexicans were upset. Their pay was being cut by 10%. Okay. The mostly uh, white miners and the Mexican smelters squared off. Okay. Because obviously the white guys are bringing the rocks up and stuff and they're like well do your fucking job and smelt it or we're fucked right oh. and we don't care if you get paid right so uh i think it sounded like that so but i bet it was not far off uh but before anything happened between the two sides a big rainstorm hit and water ripped through clifton destroying a hundred thousand in property and killing 50 people hey remember when we was arguing <laughs> <laughs> foolish huh hey god doesn't like the strike yeah boy 
Can't uh, believe we were arguing over a town that's not here anymore. So that kind of ended the strike, uh, the feelings behind the strike. Yeah, point. no, no. Then there's bigger fish to fry. Um, so the leaders were then arrested and put in jail. Okay. Obviously, this did nothing to help with racial tensions in the area. Right. So they rebuild. They keep going. Health and sanitation were poor. Both towns had bad water and bad air and were polluted by the smelt, uh, the smelter's emissions, right? Sure. So big, the big towers spewing out black. Do they know other towns exist or they're just aware of the I other? I think this is how a lot of towns were back then. Okay. Um, this led to a high rate of infertility in both towns, nice. which led to a lot of couples wanting children. Oh, the setup. This was called baby hunger. Oh, Dave, no. <laughs> what? No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 it's no, no. It's not. It's not like you would eat eat a baby. Well, it's, it's like very. It's a little want, close for my liking. You uh, want too. a baby? No, no. Ugh. You want a baby? A baby. It's hunger. still hunger. Hunger for baby. Um, her mm. belly's growling because it ain't got something living in that womb. She's baby hungry. She's got baby hunger. Mexican and Mexican Americans made up about sixty percent uh, in Clifton and seventy percent in Morency. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. Uh, but the copper mines created and backed a rigid hierarchy. Okay. Right? Sure. Whites got the best jobs and the best pay. The the whites did? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a reverse of America. Very strange. Yeah, very weird. So they were given a lot of opportunity. Interesting. Uh, white also had more of a broad definition in towns like this than in other places in the U.S. A uh, white uh, person can be a dog. <laughs> a dog could be a white person. First, uh, there were the Americans of English descent and Scot Scottish, and then a notch down were the Irish, <laughs> and then Italians and Spaniards. Oh my God! Okay. So there's there's the white list. Right. Basically, anyone who's not Mexican or Chinese, basically. Right. Right. Is white. Right. But that's but not. But still, but you're not, like a lower tiered white. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, you're lower tiered white. But not here. You're you're kind of just white. White. But if white you're is, in New York, right? Then, then and you're like, an Italian. You're yeah. a bad white. Right. But here, you're just white. They're oh. like, you're cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, there was some progress in some places. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to know what to fight for with, like, inner white <laughs> violence. You're like, I, I mean, they deserve some bruises. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So uh, the whites were not very religious, but the uh, local Mexicans, super Catholic. Okay. Because sure. they, were, they were colonized and destroyed. Okay. Right. And that makes you turn to... Jesus. Right, the he, Lord. Right. Um, as was discussed in episode 197, the orphan trains, the orphans of New York City were a problem. Oh, my. Where, oh, no. Whoa. Baby hunger. Orphan <laughs> trains? Uh, right now, and you're in my mind palace. Your and like mind numbers. is amazing. Uh, it's amazing to watch work. I think I see a connection. It's like Stephen possibly. Hawking is channeling through you. Uh, on and on through the connector. <laughs> I've connected the dots again on this one. I think I see where we're headed. Uh, so in New York, mostly Irish kids swarmed the streets. The New York Times called them, quote, ulcers of society. <laughs> okay. It's beautiful, right? Nice. Ulcers, yeah. yeah. Uh, they begged. They got the jobs. They pickpocketed. They stole. So the Protestant leaders in New York agreed the best thing to do would be to put them on trains and send them to, quote, Protestant homes outside the city. Okay. Right? So they're just packing these little Irish kids on trains and Fired them out into into the rest of the country, and uh -huh. then people would come out. As we talked about, people would come out and just grab them off the train. There out. we go. You that would be your your child to have sleep in the barn and work. I have issues. <laughs> You're coming with us. <laughs> uh, any kid not in school could be arrested and eventually find themselves on a train, whether they had parents or not. And there's no legal obligation to tell the parents. So they could just grab a kid and put it on a train. And then the parents are like, where's my kid? And they're like, oh, that uh, one, I, Iowa, I guess. I don't know. Was he a shit? <laughs> yeah, a bit. And then he probably got put on a train. We oh. put a bunch of the shits on trains. Oh. He lives with a different family now. Oh, me. Maybe. Me clovers. Mm. I think yeah. that's a, some sort of exasperated expression among the Irish. Oh, me clovers. I don't know what message we're sending anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it turns out putting kids on a train and sending them across the country was much cheaper than housing them and taking care of them. For sure. Um, today we do this with something called homeless people. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Hadn't noticed. We, we, have not, we, have, we have changed the uh, orphan trains into homeless buses. 
Cool. Eventually, over 100,000 children were railroaded out of the New York City, and everyone thought it was great. No one, had, Everyone's like, this is great. Okay. Really good, except the Catholics. Oh, here we go. Putting Irish Catholic kids on trains was what they considered a cultural genocide. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, the Irish Catholics are like, why are you getting rid of all the Catholics? Yeah. <laughs> this right. seems... Really, it's weird because weird. That's the foundation we were sort of trying to lay. Yeah, we. I thought this was like a, a place of freedom, and, and now there's just ninety five of them packed in a box car, just like. <laughs> <laughs> so the Sisters of Charity decided to counter it. The order's first foundling house was established in 1870 for uh, as a place for children. A foundling, okay. So they're doing, so. they're creating an orphanage situation. Sure. Sort of, uh, as opposed to putting them on trains. And right, like okay, right. Uh, to, to stop the cultural genocide. Sure, better. The nuns allowed poor mothers to drop off babies without question and gave them up to three years to reclaim the child. Right. So that's pretty nice. No, that's great. That's great. It's good to know the you can... The three-year window? Sure, yeah. Oh. Well, and then you just got to check back in, and then you can buy another three years. Yeah, yeah. Well, I still don't want him, so... I'll be back in three. I'll check back in in three. Keep raising him. They also turned to placing kids, but they followed strict guidelines. They the, they what? Place them in homes okay. around the country. Okay, right. They sure. also, so the, the ideal age is three years old because at that point the kids are weaned. You know, they're not as reliant on the mother. They're kind of, you know. Sure. But still too young that people wouldn't try to get them to have them as laborers on their farms or in their house or whatever. Oh, my God. Although I bet there were some that were like, you can swing a hammer, right? I kind of. <laughs> uh, families were vetted and matched in advance. There were no cattle calls like on the orphan trains. Right. It was more of a legit sort of putting them in places that people want. It's wanted. like a dating app at this yeah. point. Yes, sort yes, of, There's yes. a little bit of vetting, but probably not and, tons. And why not? And why Why don't we have an app? Oh, we've got a match. Babies. <laughs> Look at him. He liked us back. Oh. Uh, I'm terrified because you know. Some, I love his some, profile. Some fucking Silicon Valley asshole will be pitching this at a. Look v at his profile. DC place Ain't gonna tomorrow. take no for an answer. <laughs> but look at those cute little rosy cheeks. I, I'm gonna message him. Let's see what he says. Oh God, matchingbabies.com. <laughs> I'm just gonna send an axe emoji. More, most importantly, the families had to be Catholic. Right. And there were uh, very faithful Catholic Mexicans in Clifton and Morrency. Okay. Clifton had a brand new priest. Nice. Uh, Father Mandon. Sure. He was 26 and a brand new clergyman. So this is his first, uh, first job. Nice. Right. And he gets a sweet spot, right? Yeah, right. Sweet spot. Yeah, it's nice. He's French. He uh, came from the Frenchland. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, he got a, a couple of letters from He's the- He's like a real Macron type. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Uh, he got a couple of letters from the Sisters of Charity in New York and uh, read one to his congregation. So 60 parishioners applied for a, a child. Oh, my God. Okay. 60, 60 already. He picked 33 oh my God. out of those 60. Most uh, were mining <laughs> families. This is going to be quite an influx of new talent. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole, there's a whole thing coming okay. in. Okay. Um, the father earning a, quote, Mexican wage made a buck fifty to two fifty a day. Okay. Uh, on September 25th, the children left from Grand Central Station, headed to their new home in Arizona. This is really weird. A Why? Whole, because it's a big batch. Yeah, yeah. It feels like unleashing gremlins a little. It's Well, I mean, the cool thing is, is that they know each other. Like, all the kids know each other. I Now, okay, here's... No, mm -hmm. if I... Go again, because you know me, I love to connect dots. Mm -hmm. I'm the connector. That's why they call you the connector. That's why I have that show that was yeah, canceled after yeah. eight minutes on called CBS. The Connector on CBS. It was Thursday, and it was canceled mm -hmm. after eight minutes. Only fastest cancellation ever. You remember, I loved your tagline. Oh! Well, there was more to it, but that's yeah. where they cut out. Yeah, oh. Yeah. No, what it was was, oh, those dots is connected. <laughs> that's what I would say. Anyway, uh, I don't think it's an advantage that they all know each other. There's a shorthand there I'm maybe not comfortable with, with this uh, sort of uh, type of, uh, I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know why you're nervous. Okay. This is a great heart, everyone wants all to do a heartwarming one. <laughs> no, 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 you mean heartwarming. <laughs> So Sister Anna Bowen was in charge. There was uh, also uh, Sister Anne uh, Cross. We're all named Anne! Sister Frances Keller. 
uh, four nurses and a placement agent named George Swain. How are you? I'm in charge of uh, potting them. <laughs> I'll be putting them in the pots. I uh, put them in the pots, and then I sort of organize the look of the yard with them. Uh, the children were between two and six years old. Okay. Okay. Young. They were all Irish with names like Shanley, Fitzpatrick, Kane, a Welsh, Ryan, Mac, you know, the usual. Yeah. O Welsh is a really good Irish name. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. It was just in there. I bet it is, but it's still like. Uh, the journey took 11 days. Uh, they arrived in Clifton in the early evening. Oh, my God. You ready? Don't feed them after midnight. The town did not look great. The town didn't look great. Okay. Black smoke from the smelter towers hung in the air. The foster mothers were at the station, but word had spread through the town that orphan children were coming. Did you hear? <laughs> the little babies. There's coming. a bunch of little babies, and I think some of them are evil, but some are too. It's like picking babies off a tree if there is a baby tree. We get to pot them. I don't think you pot babies. We're potting them, okay. and then we'll organize them in the garden. A, a uh, whole gaggle of white women pushed their way to the front. What? What? And looked into the train windows. Okay. They were delighted. Oh, baby train! The gr all the girls were in new white dresses, and each little boy was in a sailor suit. Hello, <laughs> I'm actually evil. <laughs> Don't you love me, mutter? I've been in this for 11 days. <laughs> sailor, yeah, it's going to be... Humming a little bit. <laughs> All right, sailors, now look all nautical now. Come on, boys, this is the big show. This is what we were training for on the, well, the train. Uh, so the children were then taken to the priest's house, Father Mandon, um, where the Mexican foster mothers lined up. I mean, what is going for on? Their new a, a French baby. priest is yeah. hanging off, handing off Irish babies yeah. to Mexican Catholic families. It's America because it's America. This is why America. Because New York was like, get out, get them out. But this is why America is beautiful. This is why America is such a beautiful, wonderful oh, place. Oh yeah, it's great. The race is coming. It's together. a smelting pot. It's people. Everybody's very accepting and. Loving. Sure, yeah. No, I'm sure. Um, I can't so wait to see each kid doing. had a tag. Oh, like uh, a UPC? Sewn into their clothes that had the name of their 1999 foster parent sewn oh. in. So there'd be no mixing up of kids unless wow. the kids switched shirts or dresses. Well, or I wouldn't put it past these little Irish hooligans. Irish bastards. So Agent <laughs> Swain and the priest checked the tags. And then the children were put in the arms of their new mothers. Okay. See, it's beautiful. It's very... These kids finally have a parent. This is, this is great. It's a little like Oprah giving cars away. But something happened on, on the trip. The Irish Catholic, the unwanted white society in New York, became super white and wanted in Arizona. Sister Anna suddenly objected to the color difference between the mothers and the children. Whoa. Okay. Father Mandon did not understand the issue. Right. The kids were Catholic. The mothers were Catholic. Right. So he's French. He's like, what's the fucking problem? The, the, what has changed is that there's a demand. Well, but he's also French. So to him, it's like, oh, it's like why wouldn't you? Uh, Spain is fine. He's, right. She's an American. Right. So she's like, no, you don't give a, a white baby to a Mexican. Right. What are you, French? Uh, but she. But uh, they are the same. They are. The whole problem was both uh, the Catholic. Everything we, uh, we huh? were aiming towards was uh, religiously based. So I don't understand why uh, this matters. What skin <laughs> color is? Uh, yeah, it's, it is. Uh, uh, it makes well, sense. you'll learn real fast. Sure, they're Catholics, but they're Mexican. <laughs> oh my God! It's like a Venn diagram. Yeah. Oh. So, but Sister Anna deferred uh, to the priest and figured she could take back the kids later if she had to. Yes, no, absolutely. <laughs> uh, 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 my God, the nearsightedness. No, you absolutely can remove the children once they have a comfortable foundation, yeah. reassess, then remove. Yeah. When it's complicated and feelings are involved, then remove. That's right. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, then a woman who lived in the town, a uh, white woman, Louisa Gaddy. Okay marched in and asked for one of the children. That's it. Give him back. May I have one of these? I don't know. I don't have anything that matches his collar, but I'm taking him. I would like one. I want him. Then her husband showed up. He talked to the priest in French. Okay, nice. And was told that no kids were available. They were all spoken for. Right. So he's like, honey. Yeah, no, the app, the app hooked all these people up already. 
I, I, well, man, it's not going well with ours. I think he's already got a family. Swipe right. I think he's already got a family. Swipe right just, for the baby if you want. Yeah, I know. I'm not matching. A very upset white Louisa left without a child. Mm-hmm. As did the other childless white women. So this is impulse come. parent shopping, essentially. Basically, right. yeah. yeah. Uh, so the other, other white women came. They were also had to leave. Worst of all, they had to sit there and watch as Mexican women walked out with white babies. Uh, the ultimate insult. Uh, uh. They thought it wasn't right, and they fumed as one by one Mexican women walked out with a white child in their arms. Then the angry white women headed back into town. The nuns had no idea anyone was upset, and they went into the sleeping car for the night in the, on the train. The nuns went into the sleeping car? Yeah. The nuns who brought the kids. Yeah. Right. They, they okay. thought everything's fine. Right. The nuns and the Sure. And well, because this was all arranged. Yeah. It's a crazy arrangement, but it was arranged. Yes. It's, a, it's completely arranged. <laughs> right. Okay. The next morning, uh, the, uh, the, the train took the remaining 24 children in wagons and drove to Morrency. Okay. Which is like up this crazy hill. Like it's like above the town. So you got to go way up this really rough sort of ride. Okay. Yeah. Now things went a little bit different when they arrived at Holy Cross Church in Morrency. Okay. The new parents lined up. Lists were checked. But this time, Sister Anna rejected nine of the families. I don't know why. Maybe she just said, they're too Mexican. So Sister Anna, who learned about the uh, fact that some of the Catholic families were Mexican in the last town, uh, now comes here and is like, oh, there's a new policy. We're like American Idol now. Not everybody gets on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Basically. Right. Oh, yeah. you didn't hear? <clears throat> no, you got to read the fine print on the back of the tag on the kid's shirt. It's little, but it's there. But all of the kids ended up being giving out, given out to Mexican Catholic families in the end. Okay. Now, the founding uh, group, that's what I'm calling all the nurses and nuns, sorry, the founding group. Sure. And Agent Swain. Okay. That's where I've invested most of my money is in the founding group. Yep. Then they went to the Morrency Hotel. They're like, our, our job is done here. Right. Um, there, three local men stormed in and confronted Agent Swain. Oh, boy. Three local men. Uh, one was the manager of Detroit Copper. Uh, that should be a name of a show. Detroit Copper. <laughs> Uh, the yeah, company I've been looking for something to do ever since uh, the connector got canceled. Pitch it. I would love to pitch it. There's also the company doctor. Not as good. And then another guy. Uh, this those three of them. Uh, they demand to know. I, okay, now I would like the show. Another guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. That's my winner. So the three demanded to know how uh, you know Agent Swain could put white children with Mexicans. <laughs> Okay, that's a weird one to answer. And Asian Swain basically said, fuck off, it's none of your business. Right, okay. Back in Clifton, the whites were getting riled up. Never good. That's never a good sign. Never good. Never a good thing. The ne the worst next thing to hear is, and then a pitchfork train fell over. The whites are getting riled up. That happens in uh, St. Louis, right, Aaron? The whites get riled up. So uh, they were trading stories. So they're 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 ta now they're just sitting around talking shit about Mexicans. Okay. They're trading uh, stories of shiftless Mexican men and immoral Mexican women. They said they were no better than Indians. So th and this really is just like flame fanning, just out of they're just racial yeah. recharged. Now rage. they're just getting themselves riled right. up. To well, I heard one of them. <laughs> what? No, I will say this. I heard one of them. One of them rides a broom. Right, right away. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We got to get them out of there. Did you say bear? Yeah. One of them rides on the back of a bear. <laughs> and she has a sword. And she is here to cut out and eat hearts of these little children. Is that, are you talking about Xena? Z no. The, what? No. The, the Mexicans. No, they're not. No, there's no princess. Is they the are Mexicans. No, there is no princess warrior. Uh, the beast, beast master. You think of the beast master. No. These. Oh, my God. These families. They should remake the Beastmaster. What? I think you're in the wrong riot. Oh, shit. Yeah, get. I'm at the network riot. Yeah, get out of here. Uh, so they said they're no better than Indians, half-breeds who had filthy homes. They didn't know how to treat white children. One woman, she said she saw. Uh, this is after hours. <laughs> yeah, this is. Just... <laughs> they don't know how to treat the children. 
One woman said she saw a New Mexican mother give a beer to her child. <laughs> okay. Another said they poison kids with spicy Mexican food. That's, well, that's true. I mean, how many more have to die at the hands of Pico de Gallo? <laughs> That's why they call it Pico de Gallo. Oh, Pico de Bayo. The priest was terrible, selling them to the highest bidder, they also said. All right, all right. We got one over here. We got one over here. We got one over here. 99. 99, 99. Do I 10, 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 11, 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 13, 13. Do I hear 13? Uh, do I hear 14? Do I hear 14? Do I hear 15? 15. Baby. 15 going what? 15 going twice? This man has a baby. Yeah. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> We're legally okay with us. I got a baby hunger. Oh, oh different no. kind. Different kind than you, man. Uh, I like to eat them because they're soft. We can't and, sell to the guy who's eating the babies. I'm going to cook them in my green mm. egg. It's a smoker. No, oh, boy. Uh, so there were eight female ringleaders, and they persuaded five men to do something about the situation. Well, good. This always ends well. The men went to the sheriff, but he told them he couldn't arrest the Mexicans without a reason. Right. Okay. So... <laughs> You know, sometimes, Dave, we get so mired in uh, the dumb reality that I forget that there is potential for someone to actually just call out reality and just say what has to be said, which is, oh, no, there's no reason to do that. So, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, but he did agree to go to Morrency to find the priest and agent and bring them back. So he's in Clifton. So he says, I'm going to go up to Morrency. I'm going to get the priest and the agent. We're, I'm going to bring them back. We're going to figure this out. Okay. Um, and, a, a, and a white guy's like, I'll go with you. So now it's the white guy and a sheriff heading up there. Okay, good. So first they got there, they found Sister Anna, who told them she was going to inspect the homes and take away the kids if it wasn't good enough. So sure. she's like, no, we have this handled. If it's not Look, if there's hot enough, sauce, we take them. We've been very clear. <laughs> I think we know the parameters we're dealing with. If there's any pico, Look. any of them jumping around beans. Yeah, yeah, period. Uh, so the sheriff, uh, who's now been joined by another man from Morrency. Okay. And they, they confront an agent Swain in his room. So they storm up to his room. <laughs> it's a bad look. One of the men was the mine boss who told Swain the Mexicans didn't earn enough money. And he knew that because he didn't pay them enough. Interesting admission. <laughs> I know they don't have the money cause I'm an asshole. <laughs> How do you think I'm rich? <laughs> yeah. Rumors uh, swirled in the mining camp that the white children, quote, were going to stay in the half-breed homes. Um. Which, uh, not necessarily a rumor, um, the truth, that's what, what is supposed to happen. They're supposed to stay in the homes of the people who this legally were adopting them. This was planned. It's a legal adoption. Planned. Yes. This ha was planned. Yes. Right. A mob formed outside the hotel. Uh, you know, what, what do we have? What do we have? A 50% per episode mob rate on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> effective or ineffective, they formed often. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel a mob coming on. People stood outside and they shouted that they would take the children themselves. Okay, good. Better, 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 better. So the mind boss then lectured the foundling group about how awesome racial discrimination was in the Southwest. Uh... The, He's okay. Keep going. Sorry. The placement quote violated some of the deepest feelings and strongest convictions in the Americans in the community. Good. Obviously, Americans meant white because a lot of these people are Mexican Americans, but obviously, America meant white. Yeah. No. You know. I, thankfully, I feel like. Oh well, it, we had a brief detour, but we're <laughs> back on track. We're right there now. Thankfully. So there's about 700 whites who live in Morrency. Uh, 400 of whom are now outside the hotel. Oh, Jesus. They pushed in and yelled they would tar and feather the priest and the agent. Oh my God. One of the nuns, quote... Is this still the French one? Yeah. He, I mean, he must just be like, uh, sorry, I'm very confused. Uh, uh, I'm not sure why I would be tarred <laughs> and feathered. This was uh, uh, agreed upon. That's not what I thought. Uh, sorry. Uh, one of the nuns, quote, in the street, a sheriff sat on horseback with a revolver like the other men. Women called us vile names, and some of them put pistols to our heads. They said there was no law in that town, and that they made their own laws. None meet gun. So, so it seems cool. 
Yeah, no, no. This is for sure how you drew it. This up. is still how adoption uh, is do is done in the U.S. Very much, very yeah. much so, very much so. All right. Well, we'll just be outside leering for a week and make sure the kid's not distressed. Okay. <laughs> and if it is, we'll come in and yank it. In Clifton, so that's in Morrency. Now, in Clifton, a crowd had been growing bigger and more angry by the hour throughout the day. Sure. They learned in the afternoon from a phone call that Agent Swain would not give in. Very, very white woman, Muriel Wright, urged the, quote, good citizens of the town to rescue these babies. Rescue them from the people who are, uh, uh, who I assume, them. feeding them and have a bed for them and stuff. Well, I mean, to be fair, only one meal could have been served by true, now. So, true. you know, it's hard to judge. So 25 white men formed a posse. So now there's a posse in the mob? Uh, well, this is this is the other town. But so still, Clifton is formed a posse. But I thought we had a mob as well. Uh, we kind of do have a so mob. So we do have a there. posse inside a mob situation. Yeah. We got a posse in the mob. Um, they said there was no law in that town and that they made their own. Whoops, sorry. Switched around. So they okay, throw some uh, tea on the chair. So they, they form a posse. Okay. Um, they include two deputy sheriffs in the posse and a superintendent at the smelter. So a high up guy at the, the smelter and then two. So big wigs, right? Sure. Yeah. I know. The guy's high up in smelting. Top smelts. <laughs> He's making the smelt game. What are you going to say? You that's know what a, I mean? That's the name of the show I'm pitching. Uh, well, that's good too. Top smelts. Uh, I see that on Bravo. <laughs> big time. I like your future. <laughs> Up the hill in Morrency, facing an unwinnable situation, Sister Anna ordered Swain to go get the already placed kids in Morrency from their new homes. Funny, funny enough, when when autocorrect, when I didn't catch it, it spells Morrency as moronic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's autocorrect, Dave. You might just know the tale. Uh, okay, so, so now now the plan is uh, removal, immediate yeah, removal, because their immediate... li their lives are at stake. Right? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. These children who were living on the streets of New York uh, now who have homes will not adjust properly. And remember, people, this is a very anti-Catholic time, so nuns are not something that, like, it's almost like, you know, the way people would be upset about Muslims today. It's like right. that sort of situation. Right, right. So, cool. Um, and then after he got the kids out of the homes in Morrency, he was to go to Clifton and get the kids there. As what, what, how does he do that? He sort of got like a uh, when you catch a bunch of fish, just like a thing with a lot of hooks in it. There's a lot to well, keep track. Uh, of. Yeah, you have. Or do a, you have a sort of sheepdog with you? No, it's like a Bjorn, but it's got like 25. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. I like that. Or so you just, just got a bunch around. of those little straps, like that you. Use yeah, to, like, you can also walk them. Little like that. elastic sort yeah. of leash. Um, or you're like walking around a, like the dog whisperer like a, a with like Diderod. 65 orphans. You can also do like a, a, a Diderod. Mush, boys, so, mush. Yeah, yeah baby. Mush. No babies, just yeah. You know, the gravel olds. hurts their hands, I think. But you know what? They can move. Yeah, they can move. They're they can little. Move. So, um, as is the way in the area, when people start fighting, it started raining like crazy. Oh my gosh! Okay. The priest and Swain went out in the torrent of rain and told the new parents to bring their children to the hotel immediately, storm or no storm. Okay. The soaked family started showing up at 7.30 p.m., and the last came at 10 p.m. Sorry. Now, as each family walked in, the mine boss would read aloud how much the father's wages were. What a dick. <laughs> God damn. It just... The worst, like, uh, the worst fucker. Yeah, like what everybody's a, terrible, but then there's this guy who's like, I want to win it. The guy who doesn't pay them enough is then reading out how little he pays them, not understanding that that makes him a fucking double Boy, asshole. Boy, Hank, you're a real dick. <laughs> I know. Wait, wait what? <laughs> By the way, Sue shows up to work Monday. To me, your labor is worth nothing. In Clifton, the posse set out after dark in the rain. Okay. Armed with rifles and revolvers. Nice. A delivery man for the Arizona Copper Company store knew where the houses were because he was the delivery man for the store. So the copper man's going to be the problem. He called uh, the foster parents, his longtime customers, quote, half Indians of the lowest kind. Cool. Okay. So... It looks like the mine boss isn't necessarily going to run away with this one. <laughs> I don't know about copper delivery, man. The posse went house to house and demanded each orphan. The posse went house to house and demanded each orphan. Yeah. I mean. Uh, America the beautiful. Uh, but 
When did they got to? Uh, we're taking your kid back. <laughs> uh, what? There's a good amount of us. No, 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 no. no. There we go. All right. No, See you that, later, ma'am. That's my. She, her husband only makes a dollar a week. It's raining out there. How you doing, ma'am? Sorry, Hi. we were just next door. Hi. Oh, there we go. Here no, he is. No, no, it's a little no, one. No, Put him on the no, leash. What? No, there we go. That's Thank my you. New... Her husband makes fifty cents. He's a loser. <laughs> How do you know that? I'm the dick who doesn't pay anyone anything. <laughs> I've got real issues. I didn't think that I'm actually shouting this. I mean, think of the lapses I have. <laughs> what a nightmare it must be to be a lonely old mind. How boss. much do you make a year? A lot, because I rip off all these idiots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when they got to the home of the Chacones, uh, it was a bit awkward because she was the town teacher and he made the highest wage of all the Mexicans in town. And the delivery man felt a little bit ashamed knowing they were, quote, honest people. But, you know, they took the baby. Anyway. Well, yeah, they they're <laughs> half Indians or whatever, right? So, well. Because the posse dart agreed that all Mexicans were bad. Well, and, you're and, running on posse fuel at this point, yeah, too. No, yeah, no. I mean, you can't. And it is nice to hear a hint of morality. Like There's I, an ember in there. I, I understand disappointing a child or, or foster parents. Sure. Real hard to disappoint a posse. Yeah. You, Cause you see the look in their eyes. Oh, but like they want to do bad. Yeah, it's Christmas. And it's Christmas. It's Christmas at the spur of the moment. Yeah. You don't want to ruin that for the posse. Well, I guess we're not going to get every baby. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Come on guys. We tried. We tried. By midnight, all 16 Clifton orphans were at the hotel. Some of them were sick to their stomachs. Sure. I wonder why. No. Trauma? No. No, 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 no. Not not a train ride followed by relief and immediate removal. <laughs> None of that. It was, it was that hot what, food. You do what's best for the kids. Absolutely. Kids come first after us. A gaggle of white women put the children to bed in blankets on the floor. So the posse handed to the gaggle. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the mob had a posse. The posse had handed to the gaggle. They could not calm down the children until What is two... with the kids? Did someone give a <laughs> Pepsi? Well, they were with Mexicans. Oh, uh, there it is. There it is. I guarantee you that's what they were saying. That was one of them for sure. It was like, I really think. Uh, so the kids were freaked out and they couldn't calm down until 2 a.m. Sure. So that's right. good. Yeah. One child, Josephine Corcoran, who was two and a half, sang hysterically until she fell asleep. Oh, my God. That's a beautiful, that's that a beautiful picture. I love so. I love, you know you're doing good when a two and a half year old hysterically sings herself to sleep. Oh my God. It's just a win. It's <laughs> oh a win. Oh my God. And that's, that's when it feels good to be a white person. Cause you know what I mean? You There's know a making... maniac, maniac on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> so alone. <laughs> I'm so alone. <laughs> and she's dancing <laughs> like she's never. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to shift gears. Swain and the priest arrived in Clifton around midnight with the intention of sleeping in the hotel and then getting up in the morning and, and getting all the kids from Clifton. Right. But then they got there and they found out that the hotel is full of kidnapped children. Uh, no, we have a room. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but even though they had all the kids, the white people were still furious at the priest and Swain. What, also, what is the plan? What is the white? What is their plan? The whites. OK. They demanded that Agent Swain wire the foundling uh, office in New York to get permission for the white families to keep the children. OK, so uh, so <laughs> I mean, look, Dave, I've mm. bought a candy bar at checkout before. <laughs> I know what it's like to not want to make a purchase and make one on a whim. Mm. Uh, the um, is it? possible mm -hmm. to is that possible to go from waking up with no intent on being a parent and by that evening everybody is like we're gonna be parents to yeah. these kids i mean in america anything's possible yeah anything's possible underneath those stars and bars. anything you want man you want to steal a baby steal a baby <laughs> as long as you're white you're fine oh, oh my god uh but agent swain refused uh, two, men, got some backbone. two men then barred him from the hotel. 
Uh, so he and uh, the priest had to sleep uh, in a Mexican boarding house that night. That was the only place anyone would let them sleep. Okay. In the morning, the white women started divvying up the children that were not theirs. So it's just sort of dodgeball pick team rules. <laughs> get two captains and go from there. Quote, people literally began fighting over children. The children were being dickered over as if at a bazaar. Okay. So... Uh, just more trauma, <laughs> more trauma. If you're one of the kids oh who's God. just like standing there, like, well, what if you're the, you know, when you used to play sports and you're the last one, that's picked, what I mean. Then what if you're that kid? Everyone's like, Ugh. that's what I mean. So you're like the kid or you're the kid at the I mean, dance who doesn't get asked to dance. Yeah. And then someone eventually is like, my mom said, I have to dance with you. Cause you look yeah. sad. And you're like, I'll take it. Okay. I'll be this one's mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm actually quite charming if you get to know me. You've got a walleye. Yeah. I wanted the perfect one. Well, truth be told, one of my hands is broken as well. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God, we have a rewrite child. You're basically Mexican. Here we go. All right, well, let's raise this thing. Hopefully you can wash dishes and don't mind if the parents have sex in front of you. <laughs> Not going to lie, you're in for a startling awakening. Uh, but... No hot sauce. No so hot you're gonna sauce. You're going to be fine. You're, you're not going to have the mm. sauce of the devil. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Pasco claimed Jerome Shanley. Mirla Wright took Catherine Fitzpatrick. Mrs. Jake Abram took Singing Josephine. Hey, thank you. Oh, I'm excited. Xanadu. <laughs> uh, Laura Abraham grabbed the youngest, Elizabeth Kane. It was her birthday in three days. Oh, she's, happy birthday. She's going to be two. Hey, hey. For your second birthday, we got you unreachable, unsolvable trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to PTSD. Hello. Uh, Luis Gotti finally got a white kid taking three-year-old William Norton. Okay. Boy, the, mm. what a... Yeah, My great. heart's so warm. It's great. A judge arrived, so there's a judge that was sent for. Of course, right? Yes, someone the, to what enforce the dumb things? Well, the 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 Mexican families are like, oh, thank God, a judge is coming. I have a feeling they're going to it's gonna not. Be fine. Mm. It's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. So he arrives on the evening train. The whites were hoping he would make uh, their stealing of the children legal. Sure, sure. So this is just sort of a portable judge, just sort <laughs> of a like a ju they, judge delivery service. They should have that today. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the judge said he couldn't sign adoption papers without authorization from the foundling, who, who was the pissing, legal guardian. It's pissing rain. It's piss. It's everything's wrong. <laughs> She's just got woken up at like midnight. At the same time, he would not give the children back to the foundling reps, so they remained with the white people. So he's like, I cannot give them back to the Mexicans. Eh, I go ahead and keep them for now. Uh, not legally, though. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So when the whites heard the judge would not help, they it's a good thing this doesn't happen to Mexican children today. Also. No, no, it's yeah. all good. All right. um, when the whites heard the judge would not help, they lost their shit. Okay. And they chased Swain and the priest into the streets. Jesus. The two men were forced to hide in the back room of a saloon until the mob moved on. Boy, that is a terrifying hide right there. Yeah. I mean, that is. Fuck yeah. Ugh. Doesn't sound like there's a window in the back room of a saloon. Um, and then they then they booked it back to Morrency, but things that it turns out were not good there either. Let's go back to the back room. Back to the back room. Back to the back room. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Gus Hobbs told them this is in Morrency that the whites of Morrency were planning to grab the kids from the nuns and give them to white parents. Oh, Jesus Christ! The deputy then ordered everyone in the New York group, uh, the foundling as and the priest, to get out of town the next morning on the seven a.m. train. Okay. Sister Anna said she and her nuns would not leave and would confront the white kidnappers. Okay. <laughs> giving up their lives if necessary to protect the children. Okay. All right, so yes, that's all right. I'm, yes, we're rooting, but... But Swain and the priest were like, rooting fuck for that, them. and got the fuck out of there on okay. the morning train. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> like, okay, we've seen, we're good. Bye. You're good so luck, nuns. tough, nuns. You nuns are so uh, tough. So, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Get them, nuns. <laughs> Numb the hell out of them. It's going to be a horrible video version. Yeah. People see um, what I just did. Townspeople jeered at them as they left. 
<laughs> okay. So they're not only leaving, but everyone's like, fuck you, you boo. This is what you wanted, it's sort of. Well, you can't win with you. You're a shithead who brought white children that we kept. It's awkward the train's not moving. Um, the sheriff then told the nuns they would never take the children from the town because the engineer said he wouldn't let the kids on a train. Okay. God damn. Yeah. Then he said Swain had promised him two children in return for keeping the agent safe. So the deputy is like, none of the kids are leaving the town. Also, I had a deal with the guy I got on the train. Uh, I get two. He gets two? Uh, or, excuse me, dose. All right, all right. I think I could be a good intermediary here. First of all, I want first pick, and I get two. <laughs> and I want these two right here. The one that sings and this guy. Um, you got sister, your Hobbs now. Sister Anna allowed the sheriff to pick two children. Okay, great. What is she gonna do there? He's the law. Like, what the fuck? Sure, sure. You get two for sure. Uh, he chose Hannah Kane three and a half and Edward Kumiski four and a half. He then gave Hannah to a Clifton Smelter boss and Edward to one J T Kelly. So he took what, their kittens. So What's no, going so on? So he took the kids. To like curry favor with the rich guys in town. So he's by like, I want them. two. And these kids are like, okay, finally, Hi, closure. Daddy. Closure. No, 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 don't touch me. No, <laughs> I'm using you as bribes. <laughs> there you go. Look at this one, huh? Welcome to corruption, kids. You like that smell? <laughs> Better. It's your life now. Uh, and then the Morrency mind boss showed up. Oh, him. He said a Clifton doctor who now lived in Los Angeles wanted the boss to pick out a child for him. Oh, God. This is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, I, oh, my God. There's a lot of weird baby training There's a going lot, on. and we really have, we've gone through a lot of versions of this story of what could happen. Fuck. And Sister Anna allowed him to. Oh, of course. He took a little girl. But still, the mob outside is furious. What? what I, <laughs> I don't even know if they know what they want anymore. I, I, I have a good feeling they don't. Armed men invaded the nuns' hotel rooms. We want to be nuns. <laughs> Took us a while to figure out a new track. I love the Lord. Come on. Uh, behind them were uh, local women who called the nuns slave traders and baby sellers. Cool. Yeah, cool. Sister Anna was able to get out the back and track down the mind boss who they just given a kid to. These right? mobs so she, really do not have anyone working the back. No, ever. no, no back door at it's all. Just all just front. All front. That's, yeah. that's the energy for you. Um, so she goes to the guy she just gave a baby to because she's like, well, I did you a favor. How about you do me a favor? Yeah. And since he'd had nice customer service with her uh, and got you were child, nice in helping me pick one out. Give me a pretty sweet baby. Yeah. You did tell me not to get that one because of his dead tooth. <laughs> oh, thank you. Bullet dodged. He ordered the hotel to throw out the crowds. So he goes down and tells the hotel to get these fucking kids out of here. The uh, crowds, I mean, mm -hmm. peoples. And then he promised to deploy his company guards around to uh, allow the whole party, uh, nuns and kids, to leave the next day. So he's gonna he's gonna set up the guards outside the hotel and then walk them to the train right. station. Okay. Um. So he goes down to the hotel. He holds the crowd back. Gets it all done. Negotiates with the crowd to allow the nuns and the remaining children to leave on the train the next day. Okay. So he's the mind boss. So he's basically, it's basically their boss now telling them what they have to do. Right. Okay. Right. So the next morning, the gar guards escorted the group to Mor Morency Station. Uh, they climbed on a train at 7 a.m. Um, and left. They left behind 19 kids, though. That's, <laughs> that was the, to the total that they did not get to take. Okay. Okay. <laughs> When they got back to New York, the New York Daily News ran the story and slammed Morrency and Clifton as the most, quote, debased localities that can be found on the entire southern tier of the states. The beseeching nuns were beaten off and the sobbing little ones were distributed among the vilest haunts of the two towns. Uh, well, that just makes you feel good about the 19 left behind. <laughs> Ugh. So... At the same time, it's also nice for New York to get on its high horse for right? a second. Just right? sort of like, well, the, these places couldn't handle it that we shipped a bunch of kids there randomly. I know, but they're they're acting like it's awesome when they literally just do fucking cattle calls of babies. Yeah, all over that's the country. what I mean. They're like, but this one was actually okay, like set up legally. Right. I mean, talk. it went horribly, but it's no, still right. New York, no, yeah, for sure. No. They're not allowed to give notes. Uh, no, they aren't. <laughs> New York, you're not allowed to give notes on orphans. Yeah. 
So at the same time, Western papies, pa- Western papers went with the classics. What did the papies say? Anti-Catholic and anti-Mexican slurs. The Arizona Bulletin attacked Catholics for selling, quote, sweet, innocent, white American babies to squalid, half-civilized Mexicans of the lowest class. What if you couldn't say white in the 1800s? What would <laughs> that have done to the society? If that was not, if you could not say the word white, would that just, <laughs> would not have been able to function? Um, so it's, it's a huge scandal. People are taking sides. Even President Rose, uh, Theodore Roosevelt then got involved. Uh-oh. Uh, in New you York, want to hunt one? In New York, wealthy... <laughs> In New York, wealthy Catholics complained to the president who told the U.S. attorney in Phoenix to help the nuns. Okay. A wealthy Irish businessman who now lived in Arizona would front all the money for any legal costs to help them. But no criminal charges were filed, just a civil suit. Okay. The county probate court certified the white parents as legal guardians in November, and the U.S. attorney appealed with the Arizona Supreme Court to return the children. Okay. <laughs> but then the nuns themselves turned on the Mexican Catholics during the January 1905 trial. They said the homes were poorly chosen and blamed the French priest, Father Mandon. And it's all bullshit. Well, there, I think the nuns are now like, yeah, let them be white s- people. Right. And they just need to sort of save face, right? Probably. Right. Maybe. I don't know. I just think it's racism. Oh, for sure. It's right. No. I don't know if it's saving face at all. It's just like well, they need to put the blame on someone else. I, so I guess. But I think it's mostly just like they're with white people. Either way, it's racist. And I think um, that's what matters. The French guy just didn't get Americans love of racism. That's well, this whole. French guy just <laughs> didn't sound, I mean, I don't know what, what he did. He does, I, don't I don't know. I don't know what's happening. You know, in France, people are super relaxed and, like, are not crazy like this. Have you understand that? But the U.S. attorney argued Arizona was bound to comply with New York state custody laws and return the children. All the whites from Clifton testified with the most insane racist bullshit possible. <laughs> they called their Mexican neighbors prostitutes, lowlifes, and vermin Ugh. in court. Their only real argument was that they were now families— with yeah, the kids right. they oh, yeah. stolen. Oh yeah, no, yeah, they've got time on this. But side. we're we're all close now. Yeah. I play ball with them. I play ball <laughs> and uh, I put them to bed and stuff. Like there's a lot going on. Uh, like, with all uh, due respect, your honor, we have pissed on this child. He is ours. Him, uh, we have marketed him as ours. We don't give him any hot sauce. You never would. We wouldn't do that to a baby. Yeah. Um so they paraded the kids around the Phoenix courtroom and the children became these media darlings. Uh, journalists reported everything they did, every gesture, every cute little saying. Sometimes they- Hannah's s- next single. <laughs> yeah. What's she going to do? They sometimes stole the show in the courtroom and the judges were totally fine with it. No, 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 no. I want to see where this cutie pie is taking this. Go ahead, darling. Oh, my more. God. Where is your nose? It's the courtship lollipop. <laughs> well, I think we all know you are guilty of being adorable. <laughs> Okie doke, I think. Uh, well, why don't we all take a recess and uh, let the kids do a costume change. Mm-hmm. And then when we come back, we can hear some of the uh, uh, some of the talents of the other children. All right? Oh, my God. They're going to be such good playing. Little man. darlings. Uh, so it's big news, obviously. Newspapers reported it in a very complicated way. Some newspapers are pro-Catholic. Some were pro-Protestant. They were the cliche of the East Coast attacking the uncivilized West. Sure. Democratic papers, especially Hearst papers, emphasized the violence against the nuns and the priest. And some called it a lynching. Headlines, uh, some of the headlines. Uh, children stolen by mob. Sisters of charity persecuted. Armed men aroused them at night, invaded their rooms, and drove them away. Okay. Uh, dregs of nation now hold infants. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the vague times. Some papers called. Uh, some papers talked of bigotry, but they meant that in an anti-Catholic way, not racist For way. Sure, great. Because politics are twisted. So the Democratic Party had the allegiance of most Catholics, but was also the most racist party. It sounds like fake news. <laughs> so papers had to walk the line of defending the nuns while condemning the Mexicans. Oh, okay, it's a okay. It's yeah, a fucking it's tough. tough one. But I'll tell you what's great about racism, Dave, is sometimes it doesn't need to be rooted or founded Thank in you. anything real. Thank you. And if you can glean that cube properly, my boy, you're on the right track. 
The White family's lawyers based their defense on race, and they went out of their way to pretend that it was a good religious town. Sure. They said some of the White families were also Catholic and totally denied any religious division in the town. Quote, the decent citizens of Clifton and Morrency, Catholics stood shoulder to shoulder with Protestants. Mm -hmm. They pushed that narrative. Uh, it was all about race <clears throat> and that the babies were better off with whites. So that's their legal argument. Right. Their legal argument is that it, they're just better off with whites. Well, and it's nice to see whites come together over it really the is. hatred of something else. It really it's just, is. That's where you galvanize them. The found, uh, foundling attorney did the opposite. He made it about religion and not race. The nuns were on board with that. Uh, head sister Teresa Vincent insisted that, quote, the prejudice animating the mob was religious rather than racial. Okay. Such an incident recalls the stormy days of long ago before Enlightenment had dispelled the clouds of anti-Catholic hatred. It is scarcely a half century since a know-nothing mob marched to the Cathedral of New York with the purpose of burning it. Uh -huh. So she's making it, yeah. She's going hardcore okay. on the Catholic shit yeah. there. Okay. Now, they made his decision. Okay, dokie. In the court. Justice Edward Kent praised We want to see more from the kids. <laughs> How about dance? The one thing we don't need to deliberate is, would we like to hear another? And we would. We would love to. Your Honor, may I ask, uh, may I ask the uh, infant who's got my finger? Uh, I'd like to see where you take it. Go ahead. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Your uh, Honor. Uh, I'm going to sustain this one. That felt like it was a little too much about you. Now, little darling, why don't you go back to your hula hooping? Would you like to pull my finger, Judge? Uh, please sit down for the last time I've told you no. My one gag. Yeah, and it's getting real old. And you're sometimes pulling your own finger, which really eliminates a lot of this. Could have done it. Okay. Pull my finger. Let's not go there. We're better than this. I don't think we are. I don't either. Justice Edward Kent praised the parents in the final decision that obviously went to the white Parents. Not a lot of suspense on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, they assisted in the rescue of these children <laughs> from the evil into which they had fallen. God damn. I mean, these, it, this was planned. This is a court. This, this is a legal decision. We feel that it is for the children's best interest that no change be made in their custody. The judge did not mention the mobs, but talked about the Americans who had staged community meetings. You mean and heroes? Volunteer you mean actions. Heroes? Do you mean heroes, sir? Children. Yeah. Okay. To remove the children from, quote, degraded half breed Indians. Legal, legal opinion. <laughs> legal opinion. The judges ruled for the whites and mob actions because they said they upheld the best interests of the children and that with white parents, the children got better clothes, medical care, and educations. Because the white people weren't paying the Mexican. I know. I mean, honest to God, it's like you don't need to trace it far. <laughs> like, it's not hard. Why to don't you let him keep the children and, and raise their wages? I'm afraid I'm completely lost. <laughs> Say it again. You yeah, so you pay them more, and then they can then they can afford better things for their children. Sorry, sorry. We, the white families have more and will be able to provide more. Right, but but they 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 hired the Mexican families to work in their in their smelter. Yes, and they have less. Right, so yes. if you paid them more, then they could raise the white people pay the white people the more. The white people pay the Mexican people more, and then the, the Mexican people can raise children. No, 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 no. Equally, yes, equally. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, but the Me you misspoke. You said Mexicans yes. instead of white people. The white people deserve more, no, and the Mexican. No, I'm saying. I'm, I'm not. No, I, I'm saying labor is labor, and all people are equal, and that their time is equally valuable. So, the Mexican people, you should pay more, and then they'll be able to raise <laughs> just, their children with good education, clothing, and everything that they need. The, what of, the white people have that, and again, I'm going to point out that the Mexicans are not whites. I feel like you might think that they are, but they're <laughs> not, so they I, can't have that. I feel like we're not talking on the same. Uh, I feel level. like you're speaking Spanish or whatever <laughs> that uh, language they harp on is. Uh, Rambling on, I never really bothered to pay attention. Any who's will be. Uh, I should get back. Um, I'm actually gonna go um, uh, beat some horses later. What? Yeah. No, no, I'm not good. Uh, all right. Go f yourself. It it just seemed like you were looking for an exit. Like you could have just stopped talking, but you had nah. to leave. I physically need to leave locales. <laughs> not one for uh, letting things just die out. So. <laughs> I'm in my car. 
The courts did not care that the nuns wanted Catholic children with Catholic families. For the courts, race trumped religion. The foundling appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court, and in April 1906, the case was heard by the Supreme Court, which ruled that because the adoptive parents were Mexican Indian, they were unfit by, quote, mode of living, habits, and education to have the custody, care, and education of white children. Right. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court of the United States of America. Well, Dave, I mean, like we just established through a fun little uh, scene brought to life, you know, there's no solution to this. <laughs> I mean, unless you drop the nuclear bomb of paying other races as higher wage. The unthinkable. <sighs> the Clifton and moronic white parents legally adopted the children. Oh my God. These Some kids went. We're probably raised as such idiots, too. Oh. Some went to the original women who had started uh, the entire battle. So, those women, right, and who kicked it all off, they yeah. got kids. But the case uh, hardened the racial tensions in the. Oh, I wonder why. Camps. I wonder why that happened. Father Mandon never returned. Uh, yeah, but no shit. He became a uh, longtime priest in Brisbee, Arizona, uh, for Irish miners. Oh my God, he didn't move far. I figured he'd go back. He'd be like, just like uh, I run a boulangerie now. <laughs> I said, don't talk about my trip to America much, aside from this picture. <laughs> Sister Anna became the leader of the Sisters of Charity in 1917. The kids grew up in Clifton, in Morrissey, with their white parents, and we can assume their Mexican neighbors would have to sit there and watch them. As they grew up yeah. their entire lives. Yeah, cool. By 1945, none of the orphans lived in Clifton anymore. No one knows what happened to them. Oh I can God. tell you that the little baby who sang uh -huh. um, died from being out in the rain that night. No. <clears throat> she, got, she got an illness right after that, and she never recovered. Uh, so that's a good ending. I thought the whites had better medicine than Clifton. <laughs> Oh my God! Holy God Almighty! Well, at least, at least, um, the cool thing about America is, is even though there's injustice, it's that the that our legal system is there to make sure everything's okay. And I think, I think today that still holds true. I think that, you know, we can see that if there's ever a problem, our legal system is here to help us. Mm -hmm. No, there's stop gaps for sure. Yeah, it's that's why we have it. It's to it's to stop bad stuff from happening. Do you ever feel like living in America is like uh, being in an arranged marriage, and then you found their diary? <laughs> Uh, All right. Farewell. <laughs> farewell. What a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, that was insane.